Hello, everybody. It's the middle of the week, Wednesday, and our New Testament reading plan today calls for us to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. So hope you have your Bible. If not, go ahead and grab it real quick. Get a pen and uh, your journal. Let's take some notes and, and uh, see what God has to say to us. Um, in, in, in this chapter, he talks about a lot of different things. And again, he's defend, Paul is defending his uh, ministry, his, his role as an apostle. And the big takeaway for, for me in this chapter has to do with our culture's focus on personality. You know, we're, we're a culture all about self-promotion. There are people who are famous and wealthy for doing nothing more than promoting themselves. I don't get it, but that's the world we live in. And uh, we, we idolize people uh, in the midst of the coronavirus. We, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's stars, it's athletes, it's famous people that's in all these commercials. We're in it together. I don't care what they say. I want to hear some, from, from some ordinary people. But yet, that's our culture. It's all about the culture of personality and self-promotion and on, on and on. And would you believe it or not, almost 2,000 years ago, Paul talks about that in this chapter. But as it relates to preachers, religious folk. Oh, by the way, we got some of that in our culture too, don't we? So Paul deals with that. In this chapter, and and the very last verse in chapter 10, verse 18, he says, For it is not he, it is not the one who commends himself, promotes himself, that is approved, but he whom the Lord commends, the one that Jesus approves. That's, that's, that's the one. It's not you self-promoting yourself, but Jesus lifting somebody up and promoting them and saying, I approve of that person, my servant. So in this chapter, as I said, Paul is defending his role as an apostle. And um, it seems when you read 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Paul was attacked on many levels. People tried to diminish his standing, his status as, a, as an apostle of Jesus Christ. And in this chapter, in chapter 10, if you look at uh, verse, verse 10, notice this. He says in, in chapter 10, verse 10, for they say his letters are weighty and strong. Now, here's the point I want you to, part I want you to see. But his personal presence is unimpressive. His personal presence is unimpressive. That means he didn't have charisma. He didn't walk into a room and the whole room lit up and everybody said, wow. You know, he didn't have that kind of personality like some people we all worship. Um and his speech is contemptible. Huh? You mean Paul wasn't a good speaker? Paul wasn't a great preacher in terms of, you know, mesmerizing with his speech? No. He wasn't. In fact, in the very next chapter that you'll read tomorrow in chapter 11, verse 6, he said, this is Paul talking about himself. He said, but even if I am unskilled in speech, Paul even admitted, yeah, I'm not the best speaker. I'm not the best communicator. He goes on to brag on himself just a little bit at verse 6 there in chapter 11. And said, yet, I am not so in knowledge. He said, I might not be the best speaker, but he said, I'm smarter than most of those yahoos out there that you all worship. He said, I ain't no dummy, and I know the things of God. Now, I'm being a little bit exaggerating, but making the point, because that's exactly what he, what he, he says here. And back in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, you remember they, they criticized Paul as an apostle and said he must be less than the others because in Corinth, he didn't take up an offering from the people there to support himself. He worked as a tent maker. But all the other apostles, including Peter, they let the people support them financially. Paul didn't. And so they said, well, Paul must not be much if he has to work and doesn't isn't supported by the now the other Paul allowed the other churches in Macedonia and the other churches in Greece to support him. He just didn't do it in do it in Corinth. But he so anytime anybody can find a reason to attack Paul's apostleship, uh, they did it. And Paul's having to defend himself to these people over and over. And this is the very church Paul started. He's the reason many of these are believers in Jesus. And and, and, and what it's saying is they were blown away by these other speakers who came around to have big personalities, had the gift of gab, could speak eloquently and, and, and had charisma. I, I remember early on in my ministry in Rock Hill, a member of the church saying to me, you don't have any charisma. And at the time, I, I got to be honest, I felt a little bit insulted. But after reading Paul, cool, 
cool. That's all right. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with charisma. There's nothing wrong with having the ability to 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 to, to speak. You know, I, I've had enough feedback that my communication skills are not the best, but they're they're better than average. I get that. Nothing wrong with that. But boy, when we start idolizing people because of charisma and their gift in us, we got to be careful. We got to be careful. Just because they're able to walk into a room and light it up, just because they're able to mesmerize us, inspire us, be careful. Be careful. Because what they teach is just as important as their ability to hold you in rapt attention. What they say, how biblical it is, matters more. How knowledgeable they are of the Word of God and their ability to help you understand the Word of God is so much more important than their, their ability just to motivate and inspire and, and win you over with their winsome personality and their big personality and their charisma and all of, uh, all of those things. In fact, in verse 10, we read a moment ago, chapter 10, verse 10, Paul said, they say his letters are weighty and strong. But in verse 1, when he's face to face, he's bold. And they said, Paul, you know, when you're with us, you're bold, but you, 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 you're, you're meek. You're meek when you're with us face to face. You're not very impressive. But your letters are hard, and they're hard to understand. They're, and they say, you know what Paul what Paul says here? Look look at verse nine, uh, not not verse nine. I'm sorry, but uh, verse verse seven, verse seven of chapter ten. He said to the Corinthian believers, "You are looking at things as they are outwardly." Paul says it's almost as if he's saying, "Would you stop focusing on the on all the shallow outward stuff, the winsome personality, the charisma, the great speaking speaking ability? Would you would you quit focusing so much on just what is outward, what's the show?" The, these people are able to commend themselves to you. They're able to lift themselves up, brag about themselves in a humble way, so to speak, but bragging on themselves, build themselves up. Paul says, I'm not going to do that. He goes on to say, I'm going to let my work speak for itself. I planted that church. I won most of you to Christ. I discipled most of you. I'm the one writing these letters trying to help you work through your issues. I'm going to let my ministry speak for itself. I'm going to let my actions, what I do to obey Jesus. He goes on to talk about the sacrifices. In. I'm, I'm going to let the service I've rendered and the sacrifices I've made speak for themselves. Not my charisma and my gifts, but my faithful service to Jesus. And so he wraps it up by saying what matters is not that somebody can draw attention to themselves, but does Jesus approve? Does Jesus commend them? Those, 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 those are the ones to pay attention to. So just a word of caution in our contemporary culture of cult personality, whether it's in the religious field, the entertainment field, the athletic field, what the news media, whatever it is, there are things more important than charisma and personality, like truth and honesty and humility, consistency, faithfulness, obedience, not for a season, but over a life. There's something to be said for actually knowing the Word of God, teaching the Word of God, and helping people develop as disciples, not just letting them have an exciting time. Word of God is what changes a life. Everything else fades in time. But God's word is eternal. Jesus said it never passes. It never fades away. So thank you for reading the word of God. And my prayer is as we walk through chapter by chapter of the New Testament, God is teaching you and helping you grow as a follower of Jesus Christ. God bless you and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And hey, 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 hey guys, Husbands, are you listening? You know what's coming up Sunday, don't you? It's Mother's Day. Make sure you're ready. Remember, we have those uh, roses here at the church Saturday morning from 9.30 to 11.30 until they run out. So bring your kids, come by the, the drive through Saturday morning, get a rose for mom, let each kid get one, and uh, look, at, look at all the things on social media that the church is putting out this week so you can help your kids get ready to make Mother's Day a special day. It's different. And guys, you know what? 
might be a good time for you to experiment with cooking if you've never done it. And then, and then I want you to get on social media and tell me how it went. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.